Hi everyone, I'm coming to you from my work. Owen is asleep and I thought I'd take a quick second to jump on and update you on all things IVF. I actually have something to update you on, which is quite weird. Um, we still don't have any money, so th I'll start with that. Um, I have put, I've put the whole trying to see whether the NHS will give me any more funding based on the fact that chlamydia was undetected by them for the whole time that I've done IVF could have caused my miscarriages as well as like the problem the leaking fluid in my tubes and all sorts of stuff I'm just I'm not even going to wait for them now I understand there's people out there that don't get NHS funding that don't get anything funded and have to pay and I appreciate that I really do but I'm um, obviously here in the UK if there's an opportunity to get NHS funding then you would do it and obviously I've um wasted mine because of NHS negligence so which is what annoys me and which is why I was trying to fight to at least get one attempt um, to see if it would work now that I know that I had NK cells and the hidden infections are treated and about my tubes and everything and that leads me on to my tubes obviously I had them removed but they couldn't remove them because of my adhesions so one's clipped and one is still leaking fluid which they found out at the HSG and high cozy so yeah, it could obviously could be toxic, it could have been leaking the whole time. Um, so I've been waiting to see the consultant. They said that they would see me in August, and I was like, hell no, August, that's ridiculous, because considering we were in February back then, um, we're obviously March now, but that's just far too long for a um, follow-up for an operation that I had in December. Um, <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy town. Um, so they've moved it up to May, which is a month from now. It's still ridiculous, still two months wait just to speak to him about what he thinks. Um, I'm still going to do that, but I have, in the meantime, emailed the clinic in Athens that I had the hidden infections testing at that I wanted to go to to cycle because of the cost and because of the reputation of the clinic. Um, I emailed them to say... I had my tubes removed, they couldn't do it properly, they've clipped one, one's still leaking, what do I do next? Um, said that my clinic, my consultant here has um, suggested the Eshore procedure, which is a metal spiral coil that they'll put into the entrance of the tube that meets the um, uterus to stop any, um, stop any liquid or fluid leaking into the uterus. Um, so... I had a telephone consultation last night with Penny from the clinic and she first of all said no to the Eshore because she doesn't want, she doesn't agree with it because she thinks anything that is near to the uterus that's a foreign body that's like metal can cause implantation issues and you really don't want that to happen. And I've heard this before and I have always felt a bit uneasy about Eshore and there's so many people around that say don't do it, I'm not just going to go go and do something without investigating it first but she's like no 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 um so I was like what do you suggest and they were like well we could burn the tube inside so then it scars over and I've never heard of this before but if it's something that does work um they said not to bother draining the fluid because it would just build back up within five days and considering I had my last collection in what September October last year and then when I went and had the HSG in February I know it's a few months, like, but it was full up again. Um, I can probably believe that the tubes do fill up quite quickly. Um, so they, yeah, they, I guess you could do that if you really wanted to, but it still will fill up. It's just like when you have a, sounds rank, but if you have like a, a blister or something, it will just keep filling, filling up with fluid. It just, you know. Um, so, yeah, so she said, um, she said I should just go ahead with IVF and if the leaky fluid still continues and it's caused implantation failure after having brilliant eggs put back and whatnot and all my issues sorted um, or a miscarriage then we'll just say to go she will try and actually take my tubes out via laparoscopy but I'll go on to that in a second but I said I don't really want to go ahead and do IVF on the oh, if it doesn't work, then we'll do this basis because we've only got a certain amount of money to go forward. So I said to her, I don't, I'm not comfortable to do that. So she, I said, is it not best for, to try and take them out first if you can do it over there? And because she thinks that it should have been a simple procedure, whether I had adhesions or not, that they should have been able to take the tubes out. But I don't know if that's because she's not seen me to know exactly what my bowel condition is like like since my bowel was removed and what's actually going on inside and where everything is 
I've got bad bags when I do that. Um, so, yeah, she was quite confident that she could get the other tube clipped or drained or not drained, um, taken out. Um, so, but this was all like talk, obviously she now needs to see me because it's all well and good like based on what I'm saying she's not seen any test results or scan pictures or anything from the hospital she's basing it on what I'm saying so really we've got to a point now where it's past the consultation over the phone time which she's called me twice these times have been free where she calls in her own time in the evening it was 7 p.m here which is like 9 p.m there and yeah I find it amazing that they don't some this clinic doesn't agree with just charging ridiculous money for a consultation on the phone and even when you go over there for a consultation it's free all i'd have to pay for is flights and accommodation so um yeah so i'm going to look into that now to go over there and they're going to do some form of investigation and i've spoken to the secretary to find out exactly what that is because we need to get money together and get a credit card or however else we're going to do it i don't know but um yeah, they might do a hysteroscopy where they literally scrape like an in, like an um, endometrial scratch thing. They'll do a huge one during the hysteroscopy. They will um, flush it out. They'll film it all. And then when you sit with them in the consultation after, they will literally film, um, play the video and everything so you can see exactly what they've done. I find that amazing. Um, yeah, so she, she might do the hysteroscopy, but it costs about one and a half thousand euros so i don't know whether we'll be able to afford it but there's an aqua scan as well it's similar but not quite under anesthetic i don't think um yeah i'd quite like to have that done because i want her to see everything before i start i want her to have literally opened me up and looked inside me like you know you know what i mean i just want her to know everything about me and not be like oh we didn't see this before it was only until we had egg collection that we noticed that your ovary was gone or whatever she wants to see where everything is i mean she said if we don't if there was such bad adhesions then sh how would they have got to the um eggs to to the ovaries to collect eggs during egg collection you would have issues there and i never have never had any issues with egg collection collecting eggs and stuff so she wants to see it all um i'm also debating having my um hidden inter infections tested again just to make sure that it's all gone and then also my NK cells slash cytokines retested again as well. Because if I've got an infection, whereas I did with the hidden infections before, um, the NK cells and stuff would rise because it would be trying to fight this infection constantly. So the levels would be really high all the time, obviously. And that could also infect, affect, oh yeah, affect IVF implantation. So, yeah, I want to check that that's all gone to make sure that that's fine. But um, all of these little tests will cost a bit of money, so I just need to for the um, the lady to, to email me back and say this is what they will this is what they will want to look at when you go over there. So this is how much it will be and how many days I will need holiday, how many days I will need over there and everything. So yeah, that'll be that. I'll probably do it. Hopefully, do it on like a Friday because I've got a friend who's in Annie who knows Owen, and he's not over there. He's upstairs. Um, who knows Owen that could come on a Friday if I was going over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe take Monday off or whatever. However it is. So yeah, and as regards with IVF, I think they do a three cycle. Three cycle. They do three thousand euros for one cycle. And they do a two cycle package for four thousand euros, which is a thousand pound more, and it's gone very dark. I'm sorry, um, which is a thousand pound more. And obviously, I feel like I'm starting from scratch with regards to IVF, so I want to have at least one or two goes to make sure that it really we know if it's going to work or not. Because obviously, not everyone it not it doesn't work for everyone on the first go. Although it did for for me for my first and second, but I lost the babies. So I'm hoping that if I can carry the baby now, if, if I haven't got NK cells, haven't got hidden infections, I haven't got leaky tubes, I'll have more of a chance, especially if three of my um, transfers, out of three of my transfers, two of them, um, I've got a BFP. So I'm hoping. But um, yeah, 4,000 euros, which works out 3,400 3, 400 pounds here and that's for two cycles and here they're normally about 350 just for one um i know you have to add the meds on top but it will still work out cheaper but i don't know how much it will cost to go abroad but i was trying to sell it to zab and say that we would use it as a holiday as well because obviously we have two weeks off or whatever it is 
and um, I take two weeks off from work. I tell my work that I'm doing I doing IVF and this is why I need it at this time and they'll be fine. They know about the IVF now, a lot less stress. And um, they don't need to know that I'm going abroad. They just need to know that I'm not going to be at work. Um, but the only thing is, is that the two weeks that I'll be needing to be abroad to do the cycle, I mean, I'll, if they downreg me with, with Bucerinin, which I don't think they will at this clinic, it would be two weeks where I come here, um, I'm doing the injections here and I have my first baseline scans all in the UK and send the um, report over. And it's only until you're on day seven of stims that you fly over to um, Greece for them to monitor you. For, you know, you get like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you get like three scans in a week before your pickup. That would all be over there. But then I would have used my two weeks holiday and then I come back and I've had my embryo transfer and then I can't have my usual two weeks off where I like to kind of lay in bed and stuff but if I want to take a week off unpaid or something I'll just tell my boss or whatever that I'm not feeling well or something I will work something out that's that's doesn't really bother me um as long as someone's here to look after Owen they're really really very flexible here so yeah it's all about trying to work out how we're going to fund it because I could probably save a quite we worked out, well, I worked out that I could save just under three grand by August, and that's just me, and then if Zev was putting in money as well, and then I could just get a credit card or something for the remaining, it would work out if it was like £4,000 for two two cycles, say an extra two grand for meds for two cycles, maybe, it could be more, but let's just say that, you know, it it would work out that I could borrow about I'd need about six grand maybe or maybe a bit more with the holidays but anyway yeah I think it's doable and I'm excited and um I need to start taking my supplements again I've been on Slimming World so I've been eating very well like fruit and veg and no fat and a bit of fat it's all regulated um I was 11 stone six and a half but like six weeks ago and I'm now 10 stone eight and I weigh in tomorrow so I could be less than that um yeah so we just need to start thinking about cutting down alcohol whenever we whenever we've got an idea of dates and stuff anyway. But yeah, that's my update. Twelve minutes, not too bad. Um if you haven't already subscribed to my channel here, obviously if you're interested in IVF stuff, sorry someone's text me. Um but I also have another channel, um Cozy Kareen, C O Z Z I E E um Kareen, C O R I W -N, N E. Um I might put a little something here. And um, yeah, they're more light-hearted videos and I'm going to have Zab featuring in some of them because I think we're going to do a tag of some sort. Yeah, that's my update for now. Um, if anyone's got any questions, let me know. And I hope you're all well. Oh yeah, also congratulations to um, It's My Turn Now 85, I think it's 85. Um, Jess, she took a massive like YouTube break, sabbatical, um, and... Um, Facebook break because she stopped doing any fertility treatments and her and Mike were just getting on with life and just doing what they had to do but it's come around they were able to start their IVF she's come online saying just to let you know I've just started my injections we were all like Wah! and um, she's pregnant her first IVF and everything so yes let's hope one of these two attempts I will fall pregnant and hopefully they will have I'll have some frozen eggs as well because they're like I said, then I don't think they're going to downreg me. It would just be stims, because, yeah. <sighs> I'm excited. I mean, I'm 34 in June, so I don't want to wait any longer. And um, not that it won't work when you're a bit later, older, but still. That's my update for now. I hope you're all well, and I will speak to you all soon when I've got something more to update you on. Okay.